Good morning and welcome into this Facebook Live. My name is Helen Jennings and I am a Stamping Up demonstrator based here into the, in the UK. And I'm coming on live this morning to have a bit of a play. Um, so I apologise that I'm a few minutes late than I would normally be. Um, we're here on a Friday morning. It's very blustery and very windy. Um, and I seem to have had one of those weeks that seem to have lasted for a month yet. Yeah, I'm not really quite sure what I've achieved. Have you ever had weeks like that? <laughs> um, but this is certainly one of them. So I got up this morning and I got up feeling very weary. I'd been very aware of the wind all through the night. But let's have a play. Morning, Angie. Morning, Em. Let's have a play and... Um, and I'm sure we'll feel better then. So I thought we'd have a play with this Autumn Goodness stamp set. Now I know everywhere in the world it's not necessarily autumn. Um, but here we're still summer, but we're getting, you know, creeping towards the end of October. And it won't be long before we start to see very much signs of autumn. Um, so I thought we'd have a play with this stamp set and some of the things that we can bring in with it and have a look and see what we can do. Hi Glenda. Um, so um, I have had a very brief play with it for a couple of things that I've done but I've not really gone to town on it yet and certainly not with the dies and things. So a few ideas floating around in my head. Let's see if we can drag them kicking and screaming into the light of day. Now, um, one of the things I've pulled out, if I can find it again, you're here somewhere, I know, is my plaid tidings paper. Morning, Caroline. Um, my own two girls were gutted that, um, and Emily might well confirm, that um, we didn't get to play with this the other week, that it didn't get voted top. <laughs> on when we were doing a all request Friday and apologize it's not been an all request Friday this um, week but I just ran out of time yesterday to put anything up and I thought better that I just come on than um, you know to, to worry too much we're not we're not going to cancel our live because I haven't done that let's hope next week I get back into some sort of a routine um, but I thought we'd have a play with some of this um, plaid paper. I'm liking this one. That's looking nice, sort of old terminal colours. You've got lots of different coloured plaids in this pack. If, you, if you've not really seen it, you've got things that will go for all sorts of different occasions. Obviously some Christmas, um, some like this autumn, but others, you know, far more generic birthdays. Uh, morning Jackie, particularly male birthdays. A really useful paper pack but I thought this particular paper was a quite nice had a quite nice autumnal feel to it autumn colors um, <coughs> so I've got some early espresso here and some pumpkin pie because I think that will sort of will go with that as well um, so let's let's see where we're going to go with this so I think we're going to have a early espresso card base so, morning Jane, let's go 14.9 and score that at 10 and a half. So we've got a card base there. Let's take some pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is one of those colours that I only tend to use at this time of year. Um, Halloween, possibly. I don't do Halloween to a great extent because um, it's not quite so... Um, not, not quite such an important sort of occasion here in the UK as it is elsewhere and it really varies how people feel about it some of the youngsters get quite into it but this sort of slightly older generation really still not anti but don't quite get it <laughs> what's all the fuss about So let's make our paper nine and a half by 13.9. So we've got a bit of a card base going on there. It's 
Well, it's easy, isn't it? Now, I'm going to go to one of the dies. So the dies that come with this stamp set, um, you've got a really nice wheelbarrow, and of course that doesn't just have to be autumn. You could put all sorts of flowers and things in there. Um, I saw somebody had um, combined a wheelbarrow with the flowers from the jar of flowers set. So do you imagine, do they sit in there quite nicely? You could have all sorts of flower arrangements in your wheelbarrow. So you don't have to just go... Um, sunflowers was the one that I saw somebody had used. So you don't have to just think autumn with your wheelbarrow. You could have um, something very festive. I was trying to think if I could think of anything Christmassy that you could add into the wheelbarrow. But um, I'm sure... I'm sure there, there would be things that you could do. Um, I'm going to grab my early espresso ink. In case we want that, I'm going to take some soft suede card and I'm going to cut a fence out of soft suede. Let's see how that looks. So these dies have got some um, embossing on them as well. So I've not actually run them through the machine yet to see how that looks. We're about to do that. So I don't know how well you can pick up, but there is embossed elements on that die cut. I'm going to have that sort of a bit like you'd have a border across the back of your card. I'm going to use my fence as a bit of a border. Mm -hmm. It may go that way yet. We will see when we start die cutting. Now, I want one of these that's going to be that my wheelbarrow can sit in. So let's have a look and see. I'm not worried about the contents of the wheelbarrow because I can die cut those. We've got dies that will cut them all out so they can sit over the top of the wheelbarrow. But I think it is that one that I need. So if I want a slightly bigger one, it's going to be that one. So I'm going to take that... Um, pumpkin pie, I knew it got pumpkin in it, brain had gone. One of those moments, brain freeze. <laughs> it's like, what is the name of this card? Colour. I know it's got pumpkin in it. <laughs> we'll take our pumpkin pie mat. And we'll die cut pumpkin pie stitched label so that's the largest size so I think we might need it to go this way so we're going to cut that fence in half in a minute and have half coming out one way and half coming out the other like a border a fenced border in the background so now we need a bit of white whisper white and Yes, we're going to go stamping blends with this so we can use ordinary whisper white. Obviously, if we were going to do water colouring with it, we'd be better off with either watercolour card or shimmery white. So there is our wheelbarrow. Our wheelbarrow there is our label on which to stamp our wheelbarrow. She wheels her wheelbarrow through streets short and narrow, singing cockles and mussels. I don't think we've got a cockles and mussels stamp, so you can't do that one. Let's just make sure we've got the right stamp the right way up. Let's come in with this one. And 
think we'll come in with soft suede for our wheelbarrow now we have two options with our wheelbarrow we're going to stamp it but there is also this die so you've got a die that will cut out your outline of your stamp but you've also got this sort of die that's going to give you some embossing so if you want a, a die cut um, embossed stamp you have that option as well but on this occasion we're just going to stamp this one flat let's bring in our mat as it's a photopolymer and we have our wheelbarrow central about there Lovely. So you could take a blender pen or a water brush and just drag that colour out a little bit if you wanted to. What I might do actually is some um, grab some crumb cake. The colour of the ink and not crumbs of cake. And mm, no, I don't think I want a sponge, I think I want a dauber. Let's find uh, every colour but the one I want. Let's get a sponge, a crumb cake, and a dauber to go with our crumb cake. And let's just, just going to add in a bit of colour on the top of our wheelbarrow. Just sort of double it in. It's going to deliberately give that a bit of colour all the way around so that that's uniform. Get sort of a shadow going on. Now, you might notice that our wheelbarrow hasn't really got much of a wheel on there, so we have got a couple of options. You can either stamp in a wheel, and I might not have left myself enough room to do that. Or the other option, which we will now take up, is to die cut a wheel. So we could stamp a wheel and die cut it and have that sitting on the top. Or we can go from a, now I think on this occasion we are going to stamp it because we might on our next card die cut wheel but I think for this one we're going to stamp it but then we'll die cut that out so we're going to go what color wheel shall we have on our wheelbarrow let's go early espresso I think we could have gone mad and gone like bright red or something funky wheelbarrow. Of course wheelbarrows don't have to be brown, you can get all sorts of coloured wheelbarrows. And they don't have to be wooden, so you could just die cut your wheelbarrow shape from really funky colours. You could have sort of like a little row of bright pink and bright yellow and bright green wheelbarrows. I have one of these sites, I'm sure you do as well, that pops up on your Facebook page every now and then. But this one is, you know, having really a competition, like and share and follow and, and win one of our wheelbarrows. And they're always really funky colours. Never won one.
So, I think what I'm going to do is because obviously if you were stamping that onto a piece of card, you'd stamp your wheel first and then stamp your wheel, um, wheelbarrow so that you can line it up beautiful. Beautiful, line it up beautifully. But we've gone a bit the wrong way around. I won't use the expression that came to mind there. So we'll just cut our hole out and fit it over the top like that. So there's our wheelbarrow. I need to open up a new glue. Let's start a new glue. wheel is going to be popping over the edge on that side and then we will stamp and cut our vegetables. I think we're going to go for for this one so that they come over the other side. Mm, I think that bit of card is not quite going to be big enough. That one will be perfect. So I have got out my little pile of um, stamping blends here to do some colouring with. So because we're using stamping blends, we will stamp our fruit and veg in memento. a die that will die cut that out for us voila lined up beautifully and then it wiggled no more wiggling so there we have our fruit and veg. And just um, it's a job to see that on this background paper. I tell you what we'll do. We won't waste paper. We'll turn it round because at least then you've got a clearer vision. There we are. You can see what we're aiming at now. grabbed a pile of colours we might need to go for some more we might decide that we need we're missing something but um, we'll see how we go we've got some dark pumpkin pie and light pumpkin pie to colour in well our pumpkins obviously so let's start with those so this is the dark one let's, um, Now this apple. Let's bring in the light pumpkin pie. So 
don't know whether you can hear this wind lustering around in the background. weathers in this last few weeks we've had sort of temperatures up in the mid to late 30s we've had torrential rain it's caused localized flooding and we've got sort of gale force winds but i know compared to some parts of the world we still I'm really lucky. Right, I think this one in the background I'm going to do in Go Melody. Couldn't quite decide to start with whether they were meant to be sweet corn or a different sort of squash. So we'll go yellow and then you can you can make your mind up corn probably um let's have some granny apple green pears um, if, if that makes sense because of course granny apples are granny smiths are apples not um pears but there just seems to be that one pear there <laughs> That doesn't make sense either, does it? Obviously, if you've got a pair, you've got two. There we go. Got some nice apples. So I've got some real red here. Let's have some real red apples. Going off in the background here. And this one. Little one down here. make these orange coming across the top here let's add in some different I think I'm going to make this And the apple green. Undecided as to what that is. <laughs> All answers on a postcard. Could have been an orange, in which case it's a very funny colour. Now I've got some dark mossy meadow here. Let's add in some dark mossy meadow up here. And I think some light mossy meadow on these on these particular leaves we'll have some uh, light granny apple green on these ones We'll have some light old olive on these ones. Not 
put anything from a basket. Let me grab um, I'm going to grab some soft suede and some crumb cake. It is really autumny, isn't it? That plaid colour. Caroline, got some, just add in a little bit of dark soft suede there, and then I think it will come in. With some light soft suede and swap that round. And we'll come dark comb cake on the some little stalks on this on these pumpkin stroke squashes. We'll have those piled high on our wheelbarrow. To take my fence, and I'm just going to snip it in half. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lose these extensions. So obviously you can um, print and um, cut out lots of fences together and they will sort of continue on in a long line but we obviously want both ends flat sitting behind our wheelbarrows here where's that nice new glue we've just opened right remember Helen new glue don't squeeze quite right Taz he's joining in so a little bit of Tombow on there, morning Jedge, lovely to see you, we're going to cover up our really quite Christmassy colour plaid because we're going to use this autumnal colour. And we'll put in our, let's put down our fences. Um, so we'll have that one coming across there. And then this one will come across the other side. But then we're going to cover them up so nobody will know. We've got a big gap in our fence. In danger of losing our wild our livestock through there. Of course it could be a gate, so you could use the gate from the garden gate dies in the middle there. So let's build these up on here and so stick that on our pumpkin pie mat. And then I think I'm going to stick that on fairly flat in this bottom bit to stick it onto there because then I think I'll use some dimensionals to raise this whole thing up on there. Let's grab some. Now what I am going to do is cut some snippets of dimensional just to go on the back here so that that sits raised up as well. Like that, let's take that off.
Now this particular stamp set and dies and I'm not quite sure what else will go with it and um, possibly some of the Gilded Autumn papers and things but this is going to be the focus of my next month's stamper stack because I figured it'd really be autumny at that stage so anybody that is living in the UK who would like to join me for my stamper stack next month the options have gone up on the website and on my Facebook page. I will add a link to um, the description when I edit this video. Do come and join us. So a stamper stack, you get this is through the post. So stamper stack through the post, you will get all the card instructions, card embellishments to make six cards to each of three different designs. Um, and there are options to add the stamp set or the stamp set and dies to your um, to your kit. Anything that I die cut, I will send out as part of the kit. I'm allowed to die cut. I'm not allowed to send you stamped images as part of Stamping Up's rules. So I can only send you the card pieces and the die cuts, any punches. So what shall we have as a greeting? So we've got all good things come from above. Quite a nice harvesty one. You've got a thankful one. Golden leaves, chilly air, autumn beauty everywhere. And plant kindness, harvest love. And there's just a for you. Do like that golden leaves i just wonder where how we would put that on i think it would need to be another little nested label are we going to get that fitted in a little nested label It would have to be the next one up. Let's have a look. Let's die cut one and decide whether it's too big that it would follow on the, um, the pattern that we've got already having used a nested label. Moving that over. Yeah, no, not not liking that idea. what I'm going to do, what we're going to attempt without the aid of a safety net, is I'm going to pop this onto a block and I am going to get some low tack tape you could also use post-it notes or whatever now what we need to do is mask off that bottom piece without masking off that top piece Just a little bit more down there to cover up those letters well, I think we've covered all that up. So let's go let's go early espresso. And let's 
ink that up. Whip off our tape. And stamp that. Voila! So far, so good. Will our luck, I mean our complete skill, hold out for the second half? We use the same tape. Tuck it around there. Ink it up, rip off our tape. Oh, nearly. I'm going to come next to it. Ooh, we've got a blob down there, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that. Let me put that very inky tape in the bin so I don't lean on it. Then cut that out and we'll have it as a game of two halves let's cut that out if only we could find our scissors it is really blowing up out there and it's uh, oh I still got ink on my fingers um, starting to rain as well certainly not a day for a picnic that's for sure wasn't planning on one, but oh, got a blob on there. Let some um, wipe my fingers and let's come in with this one. Right, I'm going to find a little bit of pumpkin pie. Not literally, that's not what breakfast is today. Let's back this onto some pumpkin pie. One. And two, and we'll snip that, giving it a bit of a border. Golden leaves, chilly air, autumn beauty everywhere. Where's our card gone? Here it is. those on so let's have a little bit of glue there and sure somewhere I had some mini dimensionals I'm not sure where they've gone walkabouts let's just snip a couple of bits off the edge of this so we'll just put a little bit of dimensional on that edge there it's popping off the end. And the same down here, actually, I might move that round that way, that's better. 
So put a little bit of dimensional down in that bottom and some glue on this top just to anchor it down. have a little look let's bring out let's bring out the embellishments and decide what we would like to have on there I'm liking the idea of the um, in good taste elements is sort of the wood would be quite nice in that sort of rusticy yeah, I think that one looks as if it's gonna be a bit tough to push. So shall we just have a couple of little wooden Wooden spots. Ooh. New glue, Helen, new glue. How's that? I quite like that one. Right, now. I'm aware that we've been I've been yakking for a while, but I was a bit late starting. The other one that I want to do, I'm going to mm, right. I'm thinking colours. Let's go. So sew saffron and I'm going to cut a stitched circle from sew saffron out of the way for now. We may, we may want them back in a while. I think we need those ones. And to take my stamp set I'm going to take the greeting that says plant kindness harvest love. Stamp that right across the centre of this circle. And I think I'll do that in soft suede. image. This time I'm going to use watercolour pencil so I will stamp it in stays on. The question is do we want black or do we want saddle brown? Let's go saddle brown because that always um, works quite nicely 
with the um, with soft suede and we want some shimmery cardstock let's swap our whisper white for some shimmery white because then we can we can mess about with it with water and blender pens and stuff so I'm going to stamp not one but two of these flowers one already looks quite watery doesn't it just by stamping it in the brown but you do find that um, you instantly have quite a nice orange stamp but that's okay who wants white stamps clear stamps that's boring everybody has those let's have orange ones right watercolour pencils think we want some oranges and some reds what we got there real red pumpkin pie let's have um, let's have some crushed curry we might want some daffodil delight might want to go in a bit darker with some cherry cobbler let's have a look how that how that's taking us and we'll want some greens um, so I think these little flowers here I'm going to go in in the centre I think with crushed curry and then we'll colour them with some real red And then come in with some cherry cobbler in the centre. And where that sort of darker shading is. Let me grab a blender pen. And let's just blend those colours together. Do the same with this one. We've done our inner yellow. Let's add in some real red. But the fact that we're going to blend it means we don't have to be too fancy pants at this stage. Cherry cobbler could do with a bit of a sharpen. We'll just add that in there. And let's come in again with this let's do the same on this one so cherry cobbler in the middle not cherry cobbler crushed curry in the middle real red here comes the rain outside not on our colouring and blend a pen and we'll blend that all out sorry keep headbutting the phone Really pretty. This little flower in the middle, I think I'm going to go in. With pumpkin pie. I'll add in, if I can spot it. 
the Caucasian craze just as a bit of extra tone let's give that a bit of a blend out There's another one just there. I don't believe that one is pumpkin pie. I'll just blend that out a little bit. I'm going to take this crushed curry again, I think, and add some crushed curry in there. Might add in a bit of daffodil delight as well, just to bring that up a little bit. Right, let's have a look at some greens. Yellow down here. That one is the same sort of leaves down here, so let's do those in this old olive as well. Pitter patter patter, I hear raindrops. Right, let's take this white green and we'll just add some of that in down there. And this is like a granny apple green. And what else have we got in here? Um, I'm sure somewhere there is a shaded spruce or no garden green. Let's add garden green in here. A bit more of an old olive just here. And I think I might take the Daffodil Delight for this bit, just for a different and just a bit of that coming on there. Mm. And a little bit of something just in there. I'm going to take. Oh, it's a coastal cabana I want, just very softly, I'm going to add a bit of coastal cabana to that. Okay, so there's our flowers all coloured in. Let's find the dye that goes with that one. 
which will be that one. We're going to cut those both out. two so let's bring our circle back in and then what we're going to do is frame our greeting in there with our flowers so we could have well we wouldn't be able to stamp quite all the way on because they overlap the edge of the circle. We needed to have found a bigger circle to be able to do that. Right, let's um, decide on our background colour. This is crushed curry. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some crushed curry ink. Um, here we go. And I'm going to take the the wheat sheaf stamp. to give this a background so let's start in the middle so then just work my way out there would be about perfect could just do with a little bit of something showing there and perhaps a tiny bit just in that corner excellent hello Wendy so we've stamped our background there we've got our circle to come in there we might need to trim that down a little bit in a minute um, mm. sure about that what about um, what about some old olive I think that would be better we'll use some old olive in there we have got some nice old olive ribbon that would be quite nice right okay so let us take our crushed curry and we need to make sure that that is 13.9 by nine and a half so let's come nine and a half that way I know we've almost chopped that bit off in the bottom um, and 13.9 that way but we want it to look like it's come out of something bigger then we'll take our old olive and we'll make that. You liked it with the red, Caroline. <laughs> I 
mm, wasn't sure whether it was a bit too much. What are we thinking? Red or green? Or does it want to be real red? Let's try that different shade of red and see if that makes a difference. We've got real red. We've got crushed curry and um, cherry cobbler or old olive. That's the real red is slightly brighter let's let's have a look let's test let's go 14.4 i think i'd still use old olive ribbon and we'll come 10 No, that's good, Caroline, it's not a problem. See, I quite like it with that red now. So perhaps it needed to be the slightly brighter red. I think we'll still go. It's good to have audience participation. Helps me to know you've not all nodded off. People tell me I have the voice that sort of makes them just relax and chill and you know want to go to sleep so I have to make sure you're all still awake. So I'm going to stick my crushed curry to my real red. And then we'll bring in some old olive because we've got that in there as well. across here we'll pop that up on some dimensionals Just going to just tied an old olive ribbon, bring that down just a smidge. have that come on with a, a glue dot oh, just stretching across to a bit of thick whisper white card because we obviously need our card base so let's score that at ten and a half cut it at fourteen point nine and then I've got two card bases there I only need one at this moment and I'll pop the other one in my box 
else at the back there ready to use. I'm liking that. Now I am just going to, I am just wondering, I'm going to, and it may or it may not work, let's have a look. Let me die cut these and see what we think. I cut some of the little wheel pieces. going to leave that. I think what I will bring in, I'm going to grab my box of sticky on goodiness and got a whole pack there. I've got a part pack. There's a couple. A whole pack there but I've got a feeling I've got some more that are opened somewhere but if I have I can't see them but that's okay let's just put some little red little red gems on okay so two sort of autumny effect cards using that autumn goodness bundle so one using that perfect and that plaid paper which is just stunning and this one we've given it a stamped stamped wheat sheaves in the background plant kindness harvest love so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed those two carts and I will be back on Monday morning and I look forward to catching up with you all then. So have a wonderful weekend.